in my previous two videos, we actually had a chance to break down both DJ Wagner and Reed Shepard, two out of the five five-star freshmen that Kentucky managed to bring in to form a crazy, crazy, crazy overall unit team that had high expectations. A lot of people really had this team winning uh, the entire March Madness in this year of 2024. Unfortunately, things definitely did not go as planned, but that's another video for another day. In this specific video, guys, we're going to be taking a look at a top five NIO earner in the NCAA tournament, a player that people had a lot of high expectations coming into this season for Kentucky, even a player that people had mixed opinions if he made the right decision to even come to Kentucky. Guys, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Mr. Rob with the shifts, Mr. Robert Dillingham. I really don't know about you guys, but to me, it's kind of sad that Kentucky season is completely over. It kind of felt like we were just watching this team play at the Global Jam tournament out there in Canada. Fast forward to damn near a year later, this team just got knocked out um, in the first round and there's going to be no more collegiate games for Kentucky. And this was the last time that we had a chance to see this man, Robert Dillingham, play. Guys, subscribe to the channel. If you're new to the channel, we just hit 30K. So let's go ahead and keep pushing. Let's see if we can reach 50K. It takes two seconds. It also helps with the YouTube algorithm if you leave a like. And let's get on to this video. Now, Robert Dillingham finished his high school career as the 15th ranked player, according to ESPN, in the 2023 high school class. He also finished as a five-star prospect. In my personal opinion, he definitely cemented himself as a North Carolina legend as one of the best point guards to actually come out of that state. He managed to win a state title when he was playing for Combine Academy, transferred to Donda Academy for his junior year, where he definitely surprised a lot of people. I know a lot of people initially had questions about why in the who is this man, Robert Dillingham, as crazy great as he is, as highly talented and touted as he is, why is he going to a school to play for this man, Kanye West? That's another video for another day. But if you remember, insane season that Robert Dillingham had. I think he averaged damn near like 25, 30 points in that uh, season for Kanye West. But like I said, definitely a huge moment uh, in Robert Dillingham's career. He finished his high school career playing for Overtime Elite. He definitely used that opportunity to gain a bunch of notoriety uh, through the social media space while also improving his game, just mainly sticking to basketball, being in a professional type of environment. And I think that was definitely a great move for Robert Dillingham to essentially prepare him uh, to play for Kentucky. Now, something that a lot of people don't really know is that Robert Dillingham was originally committed to play for NC State, the same team that actually made it to the Sweet 16 and the same team that actually knocked out Oakland, which is the team that actually knocked out Kentucky in the first round in the March Madness tournament. So, so it's kind of crazy that Robert Dillingham could potentially be playing in the Sweet 16 as I'm making this video. But Robert Dillingham surprised a lot of people and actually decommitted uh, from North Carolina State to reopen his recruitment. And then a few months later, he ultimately ended up committing to play for John Calipari in Kentucky. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I know a lot of people had a lot of questions about, is this man Rob Dillingham making the right decision to go to Kentucky? We know the type of offense and the type of team and program that Kentucky is. You're really not going to see just one star, just really just get the ball, do whatever he wants to do. Kentucky is more of a unit. They play as a team. They don't really just focus on one guy. I believe Jamal Murray's like the only freshman to average like 20 points a game for John Calipari um, as far as being the freshman. So when Rob Dillingham made the decision to go to Kentucky, a lot of people just felt like Rob had made the wrong decision and he probably should have stayed to play for NC State or just go to a whole nother program uh, in general to just let him do what he wanted to do. But at the end of the day, Rob is his own person. I believe he made the best decision that he ultimately could have made. He bet on himself. He wanted to challenge himself. And at the end of the day, he probably came out as a better person on and off the court. He came out as a better player. He understands how to play in a team setting where the offense isn't necessarily surrounded by him. He doesn't have the green light to do whatever. So I do think that Rob Dillingham definitely made an interesting choice to play for Kentucky. But at the end of the day, I do think that it all worked out at the end. I know initially whenever Robert Dillingham was playing for Kentucky back in like July, August, just early on to the season, he did have a slow start. I saw people started to question and just making statements that he just wasn't ready for the college level. He made the wrong decision. He's too weak. He's too small. He doesn't know how to play defense. All this was what people were saying about Robert Dillingham initially, but as the season went along, as he accepted his role to come off the bench for Reed Shepard, things just honestly took a turn uh, for the better and he showcased that he is easily easily the best scoring guard 
in the entire nation when it comes to the starting or when it comes to off the bench it doesn't matter if you need a bucket Robert Dillingham is that guy and I just love the fact that he embraced his role to come off the bench and at the end of the day I feel like it really doesn't matter who starts the game it really matters who's going to finish the game and Robert Dillingham he was that closer for this Kentucky team and majority of the time him and Reed would be finishing out games and if Kentucky needed a point in pivotal moments of the game Rob was always that go-to guy that Kentucky would always go to and he definitely showcased that he definitely has the capabilities to be a top pick in an NBA draft I know initially he really wasn't on many people's mock drafts it's kind of crazy that a lot of people actually had him undrafted but I know those exact same people are pretty salty right now and I've personally seen Robert Dillingham in discussions to being the number one pick in this up and coming draft now just reading off his stats here Robert Dillingham for Kentucky averaged around 15.2 points a game 2.9 rebounds, 3.9 assists on 47% shooting uh, from the field, and also an impressive 44.4% from three he also had multiple 20 plus point per game performances he also had a 35 point explosion versus tennessee he almost hit a game winner versus lsu and he also managed to earn the six man player of the year award um, in the sec i personally believe that the strengths that many people anticipated uh, rob to have to showcase at the collegiate level i definitely think those things definitely translated fairly well. I think he showcased that he's a better shooter than a lot of people anticipated. I mean, I read the numbers, 47.5% from the field, 44% from three. And mind you, you guys know Rob, bro. He's taking tough shots a uh, majority of the time, which people can look at as a good thing, but people can look at as a bad thing. I personally look at it as a good thing. The fact that he's shooting these types of shots and he's still making them, that really only showcases that he really has a lot of room to grow and he has a lot of opportunity to even experience Expand his offensive game which is honestly crazy to even say his shot creation shooting the ball from any point on the floor I'd also think he's an underrated rim penetrator as well he's not really a guy that plays above the rim but he still manages and he understands how to finish by utilizing his size and his quickness by using different type of maneuvers to finish around the rim I really don't understand why people say that his playmaking ability is not up to par personally from what I was watching I really feel like his pick and roll game is insane he understands when to shoot the ball he understands when to dish it off to his big he puts them in the right positions to score I do feel like when it comes to everything offensively he can put his guys in the right positions I'm trying to remember the game that Robert Dillingham had where he wasn't really scoring from the field and they just needed him to orchestrate the offense and he ran like five straight pick and rolls with like four minutes left he got his guys in positions to score I want to say it was whenever they played Arkansas or Vanderbilt something like that if you remember uh, let me know down below but when it comes to his playmaking ability everything offensively the fact that he has a faster type of play style I think that's definitely going to translate uh, to the NBA level now as far as his weaknesses me personally I do think he does need to obviously improve on his physical strength he is a pretty small guard at the end of the day being 6'1 6'2 ish he's not the most physical uh, type of guard out there but at the end of the day he's still a young player he's gonna obviously get in the gym so I wouldn't really knock him too much on that aspect but but that's obviously something that you're gonna notice I also really feel like Robert Dillingham isn't the most active player when it comes to playing off the ball when it comes to the defensive end I know people say that he can't guard but me the problem I have with Rob is that he doesn't really box out there's been numerous rounds of situations where there's pivotal moments and he needs to box out his man but his man ends up getting an offensive rebound or he just doesn't box out or he's giving up on the play or he's running uh, to the opposite side of the floor to play offense he's not really the most active player to just playing off the ball on the defensive end so that is something that I definitely feel like he needs to improve on same thing when it comes to understanding how to pace himself on the defensive end I don't want to say he tries too hard on defense but I do think he just needs to be a little bit more controlled on that side of the floor I, I do think sometimes he can get a little antsy he gets a lot of fouls that he doesn't really need to get but it's just him being too aggressive him just being a little bit too excited to play out there on the floor I, I do think if he can improve on those specific qualities of the floor I can definitely see um, him being a better defender uh, at the NBA level in his very last game for Kentucky, whenever they played Oakland, he only finished with 10 points in that game shot, two for nine from the field, 22% uh, from the field. I know a lot of people are saying that him, DJ, Reed Shepard, everybody just did not show up. Me personally, like I mentioned in the Reed Shepard video, I really don't think that Rob and Reed had a bad game. I just didn't think that they engaged themselves 
um, in the game as a whole. I really felt like Rob could have took more shots, especially in the first half. Definitely could have shot a little bit better from the field overall. There's a lot of situations like how I mentioned on the weaknesses where he just didn't box out his man. He would take plays off. Um, so I do think that if you were to tell him that, he probably would attest to that as well. But like I said, it just sucks that that was the last performance that people are going to you know, associate with Rob and the rest of the guys. Me personally, I really don't think that should affect uh, his draft stock. I personally still have Rob going as a top five guy. I just think if you're the San Antonio Spurs and you have that pick, he's just the guy that uh, you should really pair with Victor Wimbayama. I think they share similar mindsets. They love the game of basketball. They bring an excitement to your team. His play style is fun to watch. He can put people um, in, in seats in arenas. We saw he has a top five NIL deal when it comes to guys still left in the tournament. So he's definitely an, an attraction. He definitely has the full package, in my personal opinion. There's really not a better guard that you can get uh, over Robert Dillingham. So definitely a player that I still have a top three, top five. I even would let him go number one. But who knows who's going to have that first pick. As an overall score for how he played at Kentucky, I personally would give him an A. Uh, very similar to Reed Shepard. I think he definitely maximized what he can do as far as playing for Kentucky, playing in that type of offense, playing for that program, coming off the bench. I mean, this kid is only, I think he only played like 20 something minutes a game, which is honestly crazy uh, to even think about. So I really don't know what Coach Cal was doing, just playing these guys such little minutes, man. Like, <sighs> That's another video for another day. Guys, let me know down below what you guys personally thought about Robert Dillingham's uh, freshman year. Do you think that it went as planned? Do you think he played better? What's the overall score that you would give him? Do you think he should declare for the draft? Do you think he should come back to college? Let me know down below what you guys think. Let me know the next player you want me to break down next, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.